All right, everybody, this is so freaking cool. Let's say, for instance, you're working on this layout right here, you're designing it, and you wanna see what it looks like when somebody clicks on this button and there's a pop-up. Well, you could either design it yourself or you could throw that layout into Google AI Studio and you can ask it to design the pop-up for you, resulting in this. That is really cool and that's what I'm covering today. I'm gonna to show you a bunch of examples and tests that are ran through this new AI image model called Nano Banana. And you'll be surprised just how capable this is and it's great for design inspiration. So here's the first test. Here's the unfinished layout. And I'm gonna ask it to add a vector illustration of a robotic city behind this prompt box in the hero section of this website. Use colors that complement the current color scheme. Here's what it gave me. Look at that, that's actually very solid. It's kind of what I imagined it to be. So it really knocked it out with great detail. So you could probably reprompt it, ask it to remove the UI elements, and that way you can just have this image that can then be vectorized and used in production. Um, here's another one with the same exact layout just to do another test. Add a realistic female robot character behind the prompt box on this hero section of a website. Make her monochromatic, use only whites and blues. Put her behind a subtly, a subtly frosted glass window like the type you might find in a shower. All right, let's check this out. All right, this is actually pretty solid. It did what I wanted. It has a female robot character. The frosted glass doesn't go all the way across and there's a bar in the way. So I decided to reprompt it with that generated image. And I asked it to extend the frost glass window all the way across the screen and get rid of the metal rod to the right of the robot. It should only consist of frosted glass in the robot. How did it do? Well, it kind of did a pretty good job, but you can kind of still see the edge of the window. You can kind of still see the frosted version of the bar. Um, so it's not perfect, but nonetheless, like I said, it's really good for design inspiration. Now here's a completely different design um, from my other failed project called Riffscape. I said, place this mock-up on a MacBook sitting on a table with a musician playing a guitar in the foreground. Make it realistic with warm lighting. Because many times if you're dealing with web design and you have clients, you wanna showcase what this thing might look like in everyday use. And so here's what it came up with. I, the actual photograph and everything it generated is like great. Even the guitar neck and the fret markers are in the correct location. Now, you can see the actual layout in the background, which it pretty much almost nailed. It really needs to be ran through a, um, an up reser, like an AI up reser. Or what you could do is just cut it out yourself and then place it into here, into that laptop graphic to make it much more uh, smooth looking essentially. But this is very solid otherwise. Um, using the same design, create a poster. Now this time we're going to take an element from this web design and we're going to make, uh, we're going to do a little bit of graphic design. So create a poster out of the guitar playing a droid character with a helmet from this layout. The background should be dark and smoky with the full body of the guitar player playing character featured front and center and it should be realistic with cinematic lighting. This is where this model really shines in terms of graphic design. Check this out. That is exactly pretty much what I envisioned. And it completed the full body character um, with consistent clothing and an attire, even though it only just had the upper torso version. That is crazy. So I took this a step further. I reprompted it with the Riffscape logo. And I said, take the Riffscape logo and placed it behind the guitar player, outline it with a uh, purple neon sign. It shouldn't be filled in white as it currently is. It should be large and directly behind the guitar guitar player. This is crazy. Check this out. Yeah, that's exactly what I imagined. And it pretty much maintained all the correct details of the logo. You can see riff behind it and then scape S and you can't see the C, but A, P. I mean, it, it really did a good job of accurately translating this. That is amazing. Now here's another example of our recent project we completed on this channel called Side Bling. Change the following web design color scheme from greens to blues. Change nothing else. So this would help you come up with different color scheme ideas. Here's what it did. It did not do a perfect job, um, but it did a pretty good job. Maybe it got about 90% of the way there. We can see these two cards on the right still have a little bit of a green hue to them. It's a little inconsistent, but nonetheless, it did a pretty solid job um, just for you to get a very quick look of uh, different color schemes. Now, another thing I did was I asked it to turn various elements of this layout into 3D elements that have depth. 
all right? I didn't even specify which elements. And it did a good job. It chose to take the middle part and just add some layers that have depth with shadows. And the shadows are actually really nice. Um, another example that I have here is remove the middle prompt box and add a loading spinner with text generating results in the middle. So you can kind of use this to generate next screens. However, if you try to get it to generate like full UIs from scratch, it's not gonna do a great job. But small things like this, it'll do a pretty good job. Here's the result. You can see, you could imagine that this little spinning graphic, maybe like in Rive or something, cause it has glow, is animating and spinning in. And it actually, it did a very good job uh, based on the little prompt that I provided it. Now here's another one where I have an unfinished um, new landing page design of designcourse.com. As you can see, it's just type-based, it's unfinished. So I sent along with it a picture or a screenshot of myself from a recent video. And I said, place the person in the photograph into the layout, get rid of the microphone and make him look at the camera. It should be a full screen background image with the person placed to the right of the text, but the studios in should consume the whole screen and fall behind the text in the layout. Now that's that's a longer prompt and it won't do, it didn't do things perfectly, but it got very close. Here's the result. Now, the first thing that I noticed is my face looks a little bit different. I only provided it one look where you know I'm looking off to the side in the original image. So you know, factoring that in, it actually did a really good job recreating my face. Now, it does still have the microphone as well, but everything else is really solid and it actually works in the context of this uh, image. I could definitely use like a background image like this for the hero section. And what's also cool is we could see um, with the logos at the bottom, it didn't even screw those up. Those are all maintained and it automatically knew how to situate them on top of that photograph. Um, another thing I did is I asked it, you know, I fed it some more pictures of myself and I gave it another prompt where here are three reference photos of a person's face, make the person in the website look more like that person and make him wear a black tuxedo just for the fun of it. Here is the result. Still kind of looks a little bit strange uh, in, in terms of the face, but the black tuxedo is absolutely spot on. Maybe I'll start wearing that. Now, another thing I did is I went onto Google Images and I asked for ugly web designs, and here is one of them. We know this is a very old design because there's a Adobe Flash Player uh, thing right there. Um, and so all I said was modern, modernize this web design, make a better layout using the same content, all right? This actually gave me a text-based response initially, which was very annoying. Um, I had to reprompt it to generate a new image. Don't give me a text-based response, modernize it, make a better wet layout, et cetera. And this time it actually listened to me. If you look at this layout, it is definitely more modernized. I mean, it's not perfect, but it did a really good job um, considering, you know, all things considered. Um, another thing I asked it to do just for the fun of this, this isn't web design, this is branding. Um, I said, generate a new image. Don't give me a text-based response. This is a letter mark logo with a D and a C combined. Come up with a more creative logo design that consist of new letter marks that combine D and C. Um, right here, it actually gave me two concepts that fit the description. Here is a letter mark of a D intertwined with a C. That's cool. And here's another one, sort of the same concept, but a little bit different. I don't know why it put the S in the middle, hallucinations, whatever. I, uh, this is, you know, I still like mine a lot better. Maybe I'm a little bit biased, but we're getting closer to the, you know, point where it could possibly start generating really good logo designs. We're not there yet, but it's definitely edging its way closer. Um, and then finally, the last one, which is what I showed at the very beginning of this video, design a pop-up menu when somebody clicks on scale slash mode in this layout. It should be designed consistently with the rest of the layout and it should show a series of different scales and modes that a person can choose. This is one of the most interesting examples, in my opinion, um, because it did such a good job. Yeah, it screwed up some of the text, but it added the frosted glass aesthetic, the glass morphism aesthetic, and uh, it did a really good job. I didn't even ask for that. So this is actually a really nice pop-up design. I was really impressed with this uh, in terms of, you know, just the overall execution. So there you have it. You can use Google AI Studio right now uh, just as a service to quickly paste in designs. Better yet though, you could use their API, which is called 
uh, Gemini Flash 2.5 preview, I believe. Just yesterday's video, I showed you how you can actually work with that exact same API to build a YouTube thumbnail generator. Um, you could do the same thing here for user interfaces. You can make a little service where somebody can upload a user a UI mockup and you could have OpenAI maybe analyze the image or even this same model. It'll analyze, analyze and describe the image and then maybe with some additional user input, like in terms of what they want to see, it will intelligently query this language model to create a bunch of different variations and iterations just for inspiration. And people might actually pay for it if it's good enough. So anyhow, very, very cool stuff. I love where the industry is heading. We're still getting you know, improvements. A lot of people are worried that the AI is kind of slowing down in terms of you know, just where is the ceiling at. But this right here, this brand new model that's been released within the last couple of days is really showing that you know, we're still getting really big improvements in terms of uh, AI image capabilities. All right, everybody, make sure to subscribe up. I'm covering this stuff all the time. I will see you very soon. Goodbye.